Good day, YouTubers. Steve from Vintage Restorations Australia here. In today's episode, we show you John's repurposed 2A Land Rover workbench that he's built with the discarded chassis that we had. We're also going to run through electrolysis and citric acid cleaning of the parts that we're using for the project and also show you how we make our own rust converter. Uh, and then finally, we do a little bit of work and we fit the hangers and the springs to the Land Rover electric project. What have you done here, John? That looks a lot like a Land Rover chassis turned into a workbench. Except it's not quite upright yet, but you'll give me a hand with that later. Oh, of course. Handbrake still work, John? It's not going anywhere. You could connect that to the casters <laughs> to pull the table up if you put it on casters. I was suggesting connecting it to a clamp. And so, you know, it's like, I'll just clamp oh, that yeah. in place. Yeah. A mm. cable, cable driven clamp. Yeah. I like it. So, are you going to uh, put wheels on that? No, I think it's going to be stationary and very heavy. Yeah. Wire it up, put some lights on it, John. Oh, yeah. It's a very nice repurposing of uh, an otherwise unusable chassis. So what's the plan for the top, John? Hardwood. Probably 2v4, overhang each end. About a metre Just wide. slats. Just screw them down. Because I can get that. So this is essentially your outdoor grinding metal... Messy, dirty... Hitting thing, messy stuff. Treat it bad. It's an ungracious end for such a grand car, but... It's got a tow ball. <laughs> it's a plus, isn't it? Yeah. If you should want to tow something with your workbench. It's got a chassis number, look at that. Oops. Workbench number. Yeah, we're going to use that on the other one. Oh, man. That's now recording. We need to take these off and reuse them, because Steve's other chassis doesn't have little handles on the back. Oh, we'd like those, please. These bump stops need a bit of clean up. Uh, I would like to put them on today, but it's not necessary. Um, we might give them a go in the electrolysis bath. And a little little science experiment going here, John. Yep. Electrolysis, El Cheapo style. Bit of scrap metal, on battery bump charger, stop. bump stop. There's a an old crusty one. That's really bad rust. I don't know if that's going to come good because the metal's too thin. And that's one after I've done a bit of electrolysis on it. Oh, that looks all right. It and reduce right down, but no, and I can do it. Nice. I need to do it a bit more. And the rubber cleaned up nicely. The um, the electrolyte doesn't actually eat the rubber. That's good. So but what have you used? Sodium hydroxide? No, sodium carbonate. Oh, okay. Washing yeah, soda. Carbonate. Yep. Uh, sodium hydroxide isn't so good for rubber. No, not no, perfect, it's not. but it's this one. However, as a bump stop, is crap because. The, you can see now with the rust gone, there's a great big crack along okay, that edge there. Okay. This is one of our scrap spare ones that oh, I could okay. afford to experiment on with my little... And so you just got that hooked up to a little battery charger? Yep. Uh, well, we're going to set up a slightly bigger one, although that seems to be working just fine. I bought all the bits and pieces there, DC power supply and a nice new bucket. Whoa! I'm going to utilise this bucket to uh, make a little electrolysis tub. That's just a cheapo bucket that we bought at the $2 shop. It wasn't $2 though, which is confusing. So basically we get the bucket and we're going to add two anodes, one either side. Um, so we just use a bit of scrap iron for that, something that's sort of cheap and expendable. Uh, we're going to strap that in position with a bit of a cable tie and then we're going to put one uh, on the other side, sort of a matching one over here. Strap that in place and wire it up. This is the object we want to do the uh, electrolytic reduction on. Essentially the basic principle is we hook this up to positive, so we're putting charge in here. That loses electrons and the electrons come across and latch onto this. This becomes the negative. So the electron flow goes that way. Losing from here, gaining here to stabilise that corrosion. We're going to pop this prop shaft into the electrolysis bath. As you can see, it's got a fair bit of surface corrosion. Again, it doesn't pose any structural integrity issues, but we want it nice and clean, and so we can get a bit of corrosion control on there and prevent it corroding further. So normally you'd pop these out, but we're going to replace that uni joint. Um, they're actually steel bolts, not nylex, so I'm not that worried about the nylon or the... Um, 
components in this. It'll actually make it easier to disassemble this after electrolysis if we reduce all the corrosion. The sodium hydroxide solution that we use will also strip off any paint and greasy stuff that's on that and it'll just make it easier to clean after electrolysis. So uh, we're going to wire that up as the cathode and plop it in there and give it a go. So this is sodium hydroxide. It's about a five, four or five percent solution. Um, that's going to only evolve oxygen and hydrogen as the uh, water molecule breaks down. So it's, hydrogen's uh, not great, so we do it outside. But it's better than some of the alternates. Like if you use stainless steel, you get some nasty stuff comes off it for your anodes. So avoid using stainless steel anodes. We're just using this uh, transformer, so it goes 240 to 12 volt, and that comes out at about 8 amps. Um, that's a fairly hefty current, uh, it'll push it along quite well. A couple of amps is all you need, um, as long as you can work out which is positive and which is negative, and make sure that your positive goes to the anode and negative to the object. You see that running down into, onto the object. We've got this electrolytic bath running All right. and the little one that John set up there. So what are you up to? So that kind of uh, means that I don't have to spend my day grinding those bits. We can sort of set and forget a little bit, which is a, a bit of a time saving. So this is that prop shaft that we've only had in the electrolysis for maybe uh, a couple of hours. Um, came out quite clean. You can see the reduced the reduction there. Um, we've given a little bit of a scrub with just a bit of water to get rid of the, some of the sodium hydroxide. Uh, this will flash rust now that's come out of that solution so I'll give it a little bit more of a scrub and then I'll dewater it with um, methylated spirits. So that's been washed and scrubbed down with a bit of water. What I'm doing here is just spraying a bit of methylated spirits to dewater it. What that essentially does is the metho dries quicker than the water, it helps displace the water. And if we just give that a good solid spray with ethanol or methylated spirits, in a couple of minutes that'll be dry. Don't be creative, Paul. <laughs> Sorry about Paul's camera work. So we've got enough shackle hangers to get the springs on. Yeah, so these ones are specifically for the front. front yeah. And we need a pair of those. They're, it's a little bit worn down. We might live with that and might check our other spares. Ah, the rear, two threaded, two non-threaded. That's a little bit worn down, but you can use the other side against the spring, so that's yeah. okay. Uh, we're going to make up some citric acid solution. 10 litre bucket. And into there we're going to put one kilo. So one kilo to 10 litres. Or 100 mils per litre for a 10% solution. Near enough. So we normally uh, deionized water would be better, but this is rain water. We're out in the country, it's pretty clean water here. Yeah. So we're just going to put these spring hangers into the citric acid. So you could just throw them in there and give it a stir, but we're going to hang them so it's got nice access to all sides and we can jiggle it about and get it in and out. A good old fashioned stir, make sure it's all dissolved. And then you just basically lower your parts in. If you can suspend them, it's better. You don't have to do that, but it just makes it easy to get them in and out. Isn't that right, Paul? It is. It certainly is. That's the hangers after a bit of uh, citric acid stripping. And a bit of a clean, a quick clean. They've come up okay. That'll accept tannic acid quite nicely and be nice and stable. So we've teared that out. We're going to add 100 grams of tannic acid. That's the tannic acid. We order that via eBay 
comes from China in a little bag. I'm not sure what customs think it is, but they always let me have it. <laughs> so to that tannic acid powder, we're going to add half a litre of methylated spirits, which is essentially ethanol. And to the methylated spirits, we're going to add 500 mils of water. So essentially 50-50. The War Memorial in Canberra did a lot of research on this and found 50-50 to be the premium sort of blend. Uh, you actually want a little bit of flash rusting for tannic acid to react. Just to buffer that, because it is quite a strong acid and we don't want to etch the surface too much, we're just going to add 2 mils of um, phosphoric acid, uh, dilute phosphoric acid, so that's 1 to 100. Add a little bit more there, Polly. Put in the register. Oh, oh yeah. what a judge, what a judge. I'll put the recipe for this in the description below for you. That's the tannic we've just made. Literally brush it on, leave it, let it react. That's much better than the air gun. Maybe I should put this on that end. No, no, just give it a rush. It's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. He loves an air tool. Mate. Yeah. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I've got a cupboard full of air tools. I don't use any of them. Oh, well. Come on, Stevo. So we achieved what we wanted to achieve today. We got the, um, the springs back on, front and back, or back and front, as, it, as you see it. That pretty much wraps it up for this week, folks. I uh, hope you enjoyed that and uh, got something out of it. If you've got any questions about the electrolysis or the uh, citric acid cleaning or indeed how you make the um, tannic acid solution, the rust converter, feel free to ask away in the comments section down below. Uh, likewise, if you just want to say good day, make a suggestion, uh, call us names, whatever you want, just pop a comment down there. We'd love to hear from you. Um, for those of you who have subscribed, thanks very much. That uh, helps us a lot. We need a thousand subscribers before YouTube will give us a brass razoo. I'm not sure what I'll do with a brass razoo should I get one, but I'd certainly like one. Um, that kind of wraps it up for the week. As you can see behind me here, we've got the uh, caravan uh, that we're currently restoring. That hopefully goes next week, which will give me more time to have a play with this little, this little sucker. That'll be going where that is in the workshop and uh, hopefully we'll increase the number of Land Rover videos that we're doing because um, uh, I'd like to get this on the road sooner rather than later. Anyway, that's another project for another video. So till then, take care of yourselves and uh, be nice to each other. See ya.